Ridley is going, excuse me, <laughs> Sir Ridley, but I wasn't in Blade Runner. <laughs> That's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> the director's director's I was Tyrell. <laughs> Bro, I was Tyrell. <laughs> yes, sir. Question. But thank you for putting on such an incredible show. I, I was going to ask you some impressive question about the social implications of ESG, but what I really want to know is what it was like working, on a, working with a cast where pretty much everyone was smoking pot. <laughs> I really enjoyed working with myself. Um... <laughs> it's not like Hill Street. It's not like, you know, NYPD Blue. It's not like these great shows that we've seen throughout our lifetime. They really create a reality and they really move forward. Their ensembles are brilliant. And, you know, right now they're great shows, Lost and everything else, 24. They really have been great, great performances. We were just another ensemble that came along. The difference is, is the the way that it hit us after 9-11, okay? It opened up within ourselves an ability to reach much deeper into the psyche. Why do you think they invited us to the UN? I mean, we went to the UN, they didn't invite any of the other television shows to go to the UN. Never have they ever, a pop show, a commercialized show, coming to the UN to talk about reconciliation? Are you kidding me? You're talking about, you know, they, they want, they, because we were able to capture the understanding of having Cylons and human beings having to come together and reconcile with their differences, <sighs> made the whole situation of, of, you know, the Middle East come to say, come and get it together, guys. You guys, you know, no one's eliminating the humanity like these guys did. They killed billions of us. The Cylons killed billions of us wiped us off, and there was only 40, 49,000, 41 people left that we knew. And then, so, and we still came at the very end to reconcile, and without that reconciliation, we would have lost all humanity, period. And so, that's what's going to happen, and that's what has to happen, reconciliation between, come in, the Irish and the English, give me a break. Oh, they fight a thousand years. And they just finished, and they haven't finished, they just <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> you know, you still get these two guys together, you're gonna have a problem. You know, and the same with the, you know, the air, the Arab and the Jew. And my hundred years of sedition. What's that? The Irish and English is my hundred years of sedition. <laughs> uh, go ahead. I, I just wanted to say one thing uh, about that question about the beautiful women of the Battlestar. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get laid once. <laughs> beyond that, beyond that, besides hey, the most. <laughs> I, I, I had one scene, probably the most challenging scene that I ever had to play with Trisha Helfer, with um, Baltar, James Callison. Where I, I'm looking over here, you know how she, she appears and nobody sees her, right? With James Callison. And so she's right in front of me, like this, one inch in front of my face, staring at me with these beautiful eyes. And I'm over here, looking at a star map, and I have to turn over to look at James Dallas. He to me the same. And I would go like this. <laughs> I couldn't get past that face. <laughs>
and in this case, a brilliant actress, by the way. But there's no way you can compare the two, or maybe you can, I don't know, so. Uh, but but uh, in terms of the two shows, I, I don't think you can compare two shows done 30 years apart. It's three different decades. We had Universal, uh, ABC, challenging us every step of the way. They were afraid to be too provocative, too edgy, too anything. And they didn't get sci-fi at all. In fact, it was only supposed to be a seven-hour miniseries. So we, we would get constant notes about the cigar, about this, about that, about fracked, about the car. car. And, and, and so it was very hard, really, I think, to, to the writers to, to kind of get into the more of the core story. So, you know, here you are. And I still love the, 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 the mythology, the backstory, the chemistry of the characters. Uh, we started out, obviously, less fatally flawed, the characters fatally flawed, having to deal with their, their conflicts, which every actor loves. But we started out more aware the audience could bond with those characters. And then as we went on, had we had a second year, I think he would have had to throw in, you know, all the problems, all the issues, all the stuff, get into the dark side. And I think in a weird way, with the new show, because the Sci-Fi Channel really supported, and I, I take my head off, because I mean, we all have feelings about the Sci-Fi Channel, right? Do we not? So say we all, yes? Uh, and, and they do do some good things, and, and Battlestar was one of the best things they've ever done, and, and honestly, they supported, as far as I can see, they supported the show into going into the core story, into the almost provocative, edgy areas, doing things that most shows have never, you know, really had a chance to do. And I just think, uh, you know, it allowed them to really get more into the core story and really be able to get into that epic story of hope, of overcoming incredible challenges, of the post-apocalyptic, you know, survival thing that brings up the best and the worst of everybody. Uh, I just thought that, again, the two shows, the story, the heart of both stories was the same, but the new show was really able to go into that core story in a more powerful way. And I, as an actor, people ask me all the time, I love the ball, but I gotta tell you, and, and all you women know, you always like the bad boy, okay? It's very hard. Writers like the bad boy too, or the, the more fatally flawed characters. It's very hard for writers to write for a true blue kind of stand-up hero guy, right? They are the most underappreciated guys and women in the world, okay? I hate to say that. Maybe one day. So, you know. They're the biggest houses. <laughs> So, so, but anyway, so I love the ball, but, but playing Tom Zarek in the new show was an absolute dream. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Sandy, we're just about out of time. One more quick question from this side. Uh, Mark, earlier you mentioned an uh, episode that got confused you, and that got me wondering, uh, if there were any other episodes or character arcs that you felt could use improvement or that you didn't even like, any questions for everyone. Thanks. Use me and move on. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Grace and Tomo, but I got sick and bloody tired of them running and running and, oh, they're running through the woods, now they're running through the sewers, now they're running through the alley, now they're running through the Season one of those two on the planet, I just got come on. Can we find them? Can they blow up? Can something happen? It's just, I'm sick and tired of the fracking, constant running, running, running. It's like a prison break. How many goddamn times can we break out of prison and still make it interesting? Thank you very much.